your host, Dante Thompson. And for the next hour and a half, I want you to sit back and just enjoy the program because it's going to be a good one. Um, let me tell you, we got some amazing guests. First, we got Bishop uh, Gitne Gitne, and he is from Ethiopia, and his testimony is phenomenal. I've only read portions of it, but what he's been through in his life just from Ethiopia um, and then coming to the States is nothing short of a miracle that the man is still alive. So you want to stick around for that. We also have music by the Jim Beaver Band out of Hendersonville, and they're going to be doing some wonderful music tonight. They brought, I think, a whole guitar store with them over there. It's looking pretty awesome, So, but they're going to be good, y'all. But, hey, I want to uh, make a couple of announcements real quick. Of course, this week's Thanksgiving, and I just uh, want to be thankful for you, the viewers, tonight. And, uh, you know, without you guys, this ministry could not go forward. You know, we just celebrated 45 years a couple of weeks ago, and uh, that's because of our faithful viewers and our faithful supporters. You know, and uh, I've been I've been doing this. Uh, my parents have been gone since uh, 2011, excuse me. So for the last almost uh, seven years now, and I wasn't sure what was going to happen to the station if people would, you know, accept me on here or whatnot. But um, man, people's backed us and. And I just appreciate that, and I'm very, very thankful for you, the viewers. But we want to be here for you um, this uh, tonight. So go to the phones, 244-1616. We got some of the best prayer partners. I kid you not. Yeah, I say that all the time. But these people, they tire, tirelessly give their time to come in here to answer these phones with you. Some of them several times a week, uh, several nights a week. So uh, go to the phones tonight, 244-1616. Man, they get so excited when they pray for people. They get really excited when people uh, call in with their praise reports. And they get crazy excited when people get saved. So go to the phones tonight. And uh, also, if you uh, don't want to call in, you can always go to our website, dubbroadcasting.com. There's a prayer request form on there. There's also a sinner's prayer uh, that you can just read that and believe it in your heart. And you'll be saved. You don't have to pray with anybody. I mean, um, you can do it right there wherever you are tonight. So, um, But we want to hear from you. Um, so call us tonight let us know how you're doing and how we can pray for you. But um, got a couple more announcements real quick before we let uh, the Jim Beaver band take over for a minute. Um, first off, Appalachia. Uh, we're going to Kentucky in just a couple of weeks. I think we're leaving December 7th. And uh, our cutoff date is uh, this Friday uh, for anything being brought in the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Um, it takes so much to process things after that. And uh, we've had a little bit of an issue. One of the trucks we got, <clears throat> excuse me, started leaking. And uh, so we were waiting on a new truck. And then they told us that we couldn't get one because they were all being used. So uh, they were gracious enough to let us try to fix it. And um, we got it fixed. But we had to take everything off the truck, um, put it back in our, our um, missions building. And, uh, of course, by that time we had gotten other things in and just ran out of room in our missions building. So our conference room, uh, my secretary's office right next to mine is just full of stuff. And uh, so uh, if you have nothing to do or you want to bless people, I mean, come out and volunteer for your time helping us pack these trucks up because we're leaving December 7th. And uh, we got a long way to get there because uh, we got to pack this truck up again now. But um, we could use volunteers. But So Friday is our cutoff date for anything being brought in. Of course, if you want to make a monetary donation up until the day we leave, that'll be wonderful because gas is expensive in those trucks and renting the trucks and, you know, fill in the blank, it gets expensive. This year we are going to be able to save some money, uh, though, which is awesome. Uh, the lady that's helping us up there has uh, got a mission that uh, right outside of a federal penitentiary, and so her mission is um, to board families while they visit their loved ones that's in prison. And so we're going to be able to use some of her rooms uh, for free charge. She's a wonderful lady helping us out like that. So, But uh, anyway, Black Friday, get everything in by this this Friday and come on out and volunteer and help us out. So, And uh, if you're not able to bring anything by or come out and volunteer, you can all pray for us. Again, we'll be leaving December 7th and we'll be coming back hopefully that uh Sunday, that Sunday. So it's going to be an interesting uh, trip this year. And we'll be talking about it some more, me and Margaret, next week. But um, we're doing two parties on Sunday at two locations. We've done multiple parties um, 
but at the same location. But the way the county is spread out, we're going to have one at one time on one side of the county, then about two or three hours later at the other location. So it um, should be interesting, and I'll look forward to telling you how that goes. So but right now we got some awesome music tonight and uh, called the Jim Beaver Band out of Hendersonville, and they're going to be singing right now, I Won't Slow Down. Today, temptation comes around my way. We got to week, it's almost like she's singing. Nobody's watching, you're only human. She gives a little, then takes a lot, and I just bought the lie. Why do I do the things I don't want? So down I won't 
folks the Jim Beaver band and uh, the latest album was running on empty is that it so the latest single awesome they're gonna be here all night and that guy behind the keys man pulled out that trumpet just in time that was awesome man and he's got a green guitar up there he's just multi-talented but uh, got some great music by them tonight folks as you all know that this is live television and many times in live television it doesn't go so well there's no cuts or outtakes or anything like that. And our pastor uh, from Ethiopia, um, Gitne, uh, has uh, gotten lost on the way to the station tonight. I believe his GPS tried to take him to our transmitter location for whatever reason, because he was on Paris Mountain about 20 minutes ago. So he is not here yet, and so we're just going to wing it, because he's my only guest besides you guys tonight. So, uh, But I'm telling you, it's worth the wait um, just to hear the little bit I've read so far in Pastor Gitne, it is worth the wait, and you don't want to miss tonight, uh, tonight's interview. You know, uh, I've been so blessed here lately to have on ministers and pastors from all over the world, not just here in the U.S. You know, last week um, I had some uh, pastors that's up out of North Carolina that is from uh, that was from Pakistan. Um, just yesterday in church, we had a pastor from India and, and sharing about what God's doing in India. And tonight when Gitne gets here, uh, we're going to find out about what happens to Christians in Ethiopia, a country that I thought was a Christian country. But what he gone through, what he went through with local authorities and such is far from a Christian country than you would think. You know, here in the United States, we think we have it rough if... Uh, you know, somebody shrugs their, their, their shoulder at us at church or maybe they make fun of us for being Christians or something like that. You know, and then you'll have the occasional, like we, we did a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, uh, shooting in the church there in Texas, you know. But we're seeing persecution around the globe at phenomenal levels. I mean, on a daily basis. And these are the things that you don't hear about in the news. I remember a couple of years ago, um, ISIS they brought out all those, uh, I guess they were Coptic Christians from Egypt, and beheaded them right there on the beach. All right, And this is going on all the time. It's just what we don't hear about. Um, I was sharing with the, uh, uh, the pastors from Pakistan last week, um, Anwar Fazal, who I got the ple pleasure of meeting a couple of years, about a year ago. Um, he gets threats literally every day from Islamic terrorists, you know, or extreme terrorists um, all the time and it's just become normal place to him and uh, folks we have it so lucky we're so blessed here in the United States I think this country has a long way to go but you know if we join together as Christians we can take it there that's for sure but um, we need to pray and remember our brothers and sisters in Christ around the globe that's being persecuted I mean right now I don't know how many thousands of people will watch me. I have no clue. Um, I wish I could see all you guys. But right now, Christian television in so many countries is illegal. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to stream Christian television around the globe. Because they can shut off your television. They can shut off your, you know, uh, cable access to Christian television. They can censor that, I guess. But when you're on internet or, or satellite, they can't really censor that. It's just phenomenal how many people get to watch Christian television over the internet across the globe. How many people are being saved through the internet or, or even, even um, 
long form radio, long wave radio, or short wave, that's what it's called, short wave radio. Um, people are being saved with short wave radio across the globe. And then these signals, if you don't know anything about short wave, it's so cool, and I'm a nerd like this, but it's these signals that can literally, if they come out of Greenville, now, unfortunately we don't do it, but they can go across the globe just bouncing off the atmosphere. That is just so cool to me. And God is using that as a tool to get people saved. So I want to encourage you tonight. You don't have to be in a foreign country and need Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. Yeah, an American needs Jesus as much as, you know, an Ethiopian needs Jesus. So he came and died for all the world. And he didn't die just for Christians. Now, let me tell you, all right? We weren't born Christians. We were born into sin, folks. All right, he died for me. He died for you. He died for the Muslims. He died for, you know, the Hindus. He died for the, uh, you fill in the blank. He died for anybody that's ever taken a breath on this planet. So if you're watching tonight and you don't know that you're a Christian, you don't know that you're going to go to heaven when you die, go to the number on the screen, 244-1616. You know, Jesus made it so simple for us to be saved. All we've got to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. We'll be saved. That's it. That's it. We don't have to be smart. We don't have to be good looking. I say this all the time. I would be doomed. All right. I got the good looking part down, but the smart thing, not so much. But we would all be doomed if we had to clean up and uh, come to Jesus, get up to Jesus. But it, we can't do that. We can never be that good. He had to come down to us. He had to be born of a virgin and then died on a cross and resurrected three days later. And he is coming back soon, folks, so you need to be ready. There's going to be one or two things that happens to us. You know, he's going to come back or we're going to die. But one way or the other, we're going to spend life or eternity somewhere, all right? And it's up to you to where to spend it. But the thing about eternity that, that, that's, that gets me, a lot of people that don't believe in Jesus, they, they think, well, you're doing this to avoid hell. Well, that's a good perk of it, but I'm doing it because I love Jesus, you know. That's why I wanted to be a Christian. He died for me. How could you not worship and adore and, and cherish somebody that would do that for you? When you're talking about a God that can speak things into existence, but yet he knows me and he died for me, all right? That's how much he loves you folks. So go to the phones tonight, 244-1616. But um, pray for us tonight. Pastor Gitney will be here. I'm sure of it. So, um, you know, I've been lost a time or two. That's for sure. You know, luckily, you boys are from Hendersonville. It didn't take y'all too long to get here, you know. So, but Jim, you, can y'all do another set for us real quick? And folks, if, you, if, you, if this isn't your type of music, that's fine. You know, we all got different types of music we enjoy. But let me tell you, these guys love the Lord, and they're using the talents that God gave them to worship God their Lord. That's, that's just wonderful. It's beautiful, fellas, and y'all are doing a great job tonight. So, and man, I'm telling you, if you pull out that trumpet again, I might just go get my saxophone, you know. It won't be pretty, but I'll have it in my hands. So, anyway, Jim Beaver Band singing another song for us. Take it away, fellas. <laughs> That you've been here for a while Last place has been lonely As the years have passed you by Your wait is over, friend Come and take this hand from me What you see and yeah, need is free Follow me, I will help you receive When the ordinary people Do extraordinary things Supposed to do the same. There's a world out there that we're supposed to change. Down and out he shouts as his customers roll by. He has a need indeed, but you can see with your own eyes. A little cup could never fill that hole inside. 
A stranger's glance he sees in me I feel the need, but what I have is free Just believe that when the ordinary people do extraordinary things But it's bound to be unusual when we start seeing things And we read about in scripture like how Jesus is the lame People we're supposed to do the same There's a world out there that we're supposed to change Thank you, Jim. Jim and the boys. Jim Beaver Band doing a good job from Hendersonville. Keep it up, fellas. And uh, y'all are a relatively new group. This set up about nine or ten months old. So awesome, man. Sounds like y'all been around a long time together. So sounds good. But uh, I got uh, word that uh, Bishop Gitney is getting close. Um, again, it took him to Tower Road, which is where our transmitter is. So it's just not his fault, that's for sure. But bless his heart. And uh, um, anyway, he will be here in just a second. But I got a special guest with me tonight that's here probably as much as I am. Tobe Tolbert, as a lot of people will see. And I and told you you were going to be a guest next Monday night, but I needed uh, need you out here tonight so we can talk about some stuff. So does that so, mean uh, I don't no, have it to doesn't. come on next Monday Does night? that mean I, I don't have to come on? I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> If I'm here, you're here. But we're going yeah. to. We're well, going for, to okay, I got two, two, two things of business. One, you used to play saxophone. Yes, right? I've been talking about that tonight. You yeah. want to start a band? Uh, they don't want me, so let's just. Okay. <laughs> and, and they haven't said that. Jim's like, what? No, they hadn't said that. I'm telling you, you don't want me. So <laughs> I'm not. Wait till after the show and ask Yeah, me. yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, yeah. But, um, Tobe, you've been what here. I forgot the second one was, but. Yeah, yeah anyway. it'll come up. Um, You've been going to Appalachia with us for 12 years? 
That's Close a very good it? question. Uh, yeah. I think the first time it was in 2005. My mind math, that'll be so, this will be 12 years. Yeah, so, so. 12 years. And we, one wow. year we did two trips. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, we did King, King's Tree, South Carolina. Yep, down there. So, um, but you go on all the preliminary trips. I do. So if you want to be technical, you have been on more trips than I have. I have, and I usually do more work when I'm there too. You do. You do a lot more work. <laughs> I'll admit that. So, but it, you know, you know, you know, you can pick up things. So that's good. <laughs> Not in this old age. Well, I'm telling you, I'm getting there. I'm older so, than you are. <laughs> yeah, but you look good. So that's it's all right. Hi. <laughs> so, so uh, tell us about INS Kentucky. You've been up there with Margaret yeah. uh, this year. Um, I mentioned the the place we're staying with the nice lady that takes in the families that's mm -hmm. visiting. The, it's a federal prison, correct? It is a fe yeah. it's a big sandy federal penitentiary, yeah. and I think they have about a thousand inmates there. Wow. It is a I don't think it's it may not be maximum security, but it's one of the higher levels. I can't remember all yeah. the details for it. You're not getting out of there. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so not they, with a spoon and a file. Yeah. So. We have a uh, we actually have a drone that we we're going to try to shoot some footage around there yeah. and. Uh, it's, it locks out the controls because you are close to a prison and because you're close to an airport. And I think the only reason the airport really? is there is to serve the federal prison. Oh, wow. They had some uh, military aircraft there. So wow. I don't know if that was for security or just because they have a yeah. thing there. But yeah. Well, now, where we're staying, how close are we from the prison? So it's it like um, right across the street. It's probably it? about a mile from the prison. Okay. So, so it's a very good location if you are visiting relatives there because there's nowhere else to stay in, yeah. in that well, town. Well, that's exciting. I, know, I think has a population of about 2,000 people. Wow. And uh, so the prison is roughly half the population of this town. The right? prison does indeed yeah. add about, and I, I think probably m most of the good jobs that are around there are probably yeah, going to be federal prison guard yeah. jobs. So um, the town is about 2,000 people. It's kind of in a little river valley. Um, it's, it's been affected by a lot of the same problems that a lot of other towns that we've been to in the Appalachian region have, which are... Was this a coal mine in town at some point? It okay. was. Yeah. And um, it, it's, it's, the coal industry, you know, is not doing particularly well. Yeah. And it's kind of an area where it's pretty far out there. It's not like there are a lot of other industries that are really looking to move into an area with a, not a very good way to get transportation back right. and forth and things right. like that. The po it, um, a lot well, of coal's changing here. in so many different ways because, you know, let's say, and, and we're not getting political here, but, you know, let's say Bush Jr., when he was in office, um, computers were getting smarter and better and more sophisticated, and they took a lot of jobs. Right. Then you transition in the last eight years with President Obama, the EPA mm -hmm. has cracked down on a lot of coal. Uh, with the environment, you know, mm -hmm. which, oh my goodness, if you could see some of the waters in these places, just yeah. black with silt and stuff. Yeah. So coal has suffered hugely it has. just in the last, you know, a uh, couple of couple of years, mm -hmm. you know. So, but uh, you know, the, the thing that always happens in towns like this is parents get out of work, you start having drug or alcohol problems, families yeah. start having problems, and the kids are the ones that end up suffering they from suffer. this. And that's why we go up there, really. Yeah. It's to be able to to bring stuff for these children, which in turn allows their parents to kind of see, you know, maybe somebody else out there actually is paying attention mm -hmm. every once in a while. And um, it's always, when you do go up there, it is kind of an honor because you realize that you're, you're representing the people that are viewers here that have been dedicated to this project yep. for a really long time. Yeah. And I've met a lot of people just out in the community that when I tell them I work at TV 16, they'll say, oh, I brought some stuff up for uh -huh. Appalachia. Um, my church has gotten involved with doing mission trips up there to do, help people do construction on their homes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it is, you know, it's a, it's a big honor to be able to do that Definitely. for the people that, yeah. that donate here. And we'll take that honor lightly. I mean, we got so many people, viewers, that, that not only bring stuff and uh, donate their secondhand things, but there's people out there that actually go shopping for new things. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, like our producer of their house, and she um, handcrafts and knits, mm -hmm. like stuff for babies, you know, stocking mm -hmm. caps and stuff, and little toys for babies. And uh, we've had that happen many, many years, you know, people will actually hand make something. Mm -hmm. And that's just not something, first, you don't see it often mm -hmm. anymore, but that takes up so much time and patience. But it, it's a gift from the heart at that point, not mm -hmm. just from the pocketbook, you know. Yep. And always remember, food is a great thing to bring, non-perishable yeah. food items. People can always use those. Local food banks can always use those. A lot of the times people will donate just in the winter or just in the summer or something mm -hmm. like that. So they have spells through the year where right. they run low on food. So that's something that if we can, you know, kind of help supply 
people's needs then, yep. it lasts longer into other seasons. And people ask me often, what do I need to bring? What do you need? Well, what do you need? You need yeah. food and, and, and clothes, yep. you know? And so definitely, you know, and it doesn't have to be winter clothes. I mean, these people need summer clothes. They need fall clothes. Yep, socks know. are good. Every, socks. I, I need socks. Yep, you know. exactly. So, but anyway, thank you for coming on, Tobe. Anytime, Dante. Yeah. <laughs> There's my Tobe will be back yeah. Monday night. So, um, but we're going to have one more song, and then Bishop get, get these here. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, uh, let them get can, ready. Can I, can I call the song? Yeah, you can name the song. Yeah, okay, and also, also, so Tobe is a guitarist, and he's actually good. So they got some extra guitars. You just we'll talk in. shop after yeah. this. <laughs> All right. So right now we're gonna have the Jim Beaver Band doing "Running on Empty." Take it away, boys. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Said I. 
everybody. Jim, thank you guys so much for stepping up and helping us out tonight. But our guest is here, and I want to thank you so much for being here. Bishop Gatane Gatane, all the way from Ethiopia via Texas and now in South Carolina. Man, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank First you. It's off, good to be here. I want to know how I can get a cool name like that. Gatane Gatane. Is that is that a common thing in Ethiopia to have uh, the same no, first and last name? No, it's not a common thing. Just uh, they gave me my great grandfather's name. Uh huh. Like you call Bob Junior or some like that. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. I like that. But, <laughs> um, I, I can't forget what's your first and what's your last. Or get them mixed up. I do yeah. that sometimes, you know. So, but yeah, I want to. I want to be Dante Dante. It, it doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? So, but Bishop Gatane, thank you so much for being here with us tonight, brother. Thank you for having me. Really, I yeah. appreciate. It. God bless you. I'm excited to learn about Ethiopia, and uh, of course, you're born and raised in Ethiopia. Yes. Um, I I was reading over your bio and in. Uh, when you got saved, what you did after you got saved, you, uh, they, 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 tried, they arrested you, you spent time in prison, you, they, you were baptizing some guys and they killed them. I mean, this is just crazy. I mean, um, the persecution you've been through. But I've always been under the assumption that Ethiopia was more of a Christian country. Is it, is it not or is it? Uh, yes, it is more a Christian country, but this happened when communism take place in Ethiopia in wow. 1974. Okay. But the persecution is starting really before that. And uh, since um, the gospel came to Ethiopia almost more than 100 years, always uh, born again Christians are persecuted. Wow. They don't have uh, social life with uh, social people. Uh -huh. And even on the king time, uh, there is uh, there is no cemetery, there is no uh, church building, mm -hmm. and uh, born again Christians are persecuted uh, more or less at that time too. But when communism came and took place in 1974, what I'm telling to every American to know uh -huh. what it means, socialism yeah. or communism. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we have a full freedom country. Uh, Ethiopia is existing almost for 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. We are not colonized or uh, we are not having another dictator. So y'all were never owned and operated by the British Empire? No. Y'all were never, you know, no. part of this? So, <clears throat> excuse me, the communists, were they elected into power or was this from no. Russia or the they USSR then? Or they, they came from uh, Russia they, uh -huh. when they saw them out from Egypt and Somalia. They boycott the military and they came to Ethiopia like Afghanistan. Yeah. That's what they did almost. Wow. You know, as they took over Afghanistan, they took over Ethiopia and then uh, at that time the administration in America, they are not uh, trying to help Ethiopia. Uh, they are um, having some kind of uh, discussion and yeah. uh, uh, they are not willing to help Ethiopia. They are asking for the king and the king family to be given to them without hurting. The military coup, at that time, the military <coughs> government is not willing to give the king to America or to Great Britain. Then they make this uh, uh, agreement with Russia, and Russia brought Cubans and mm. Cubans and Russians took over and uh, communism came and uh, we lost our freedom. Wow. And uh, I am telling you everywhere I go, keep your freedom alive, what yeah. you have in this nation. Yeah. And also know what it means communism, what it means Islam. Right. And here, now, Islam is coming with a nice... Uh, and make it look nice, don't yeah, they? They make uh, it look pretty. nice wrapping yeah. paper. Uh -huh. And here it's present to America and the kids, they don't know nothing. Right. And they are starting to uh, get it uh, in and uh, trying to convert to Islam. And wow. uh, now also, you know, in every place they start building their mosque and they start to yeah. bring the Sharia law. Uh, if the Sharia law is coming, this is really very different thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is not really it, it, it is not celebrating democracy at all. Right. And, uh, and, and, you know, democracy is always threatened here in the U.S. I mean, yeah. we see it all the time. But it's never 
via a foreign power like USSR at the time was in Ethiopia. I mean, overnight it changed basically. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. Here, we're seeing it through elected officials, and, and we elect these people, folks, right? And then they chip away at a freedom here or a liberty here mm -hmm. or, or it says, you know, hey, Christians, you have to do this. You can't discriminate against, you know, this people. You have to forego your beliefs and mm -hmm you know, to appease other people in certain situations. And so at, 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 it's going to be a progression here in the United States if we don't do something about it. Yeah. And that they're going to chip away at these freedoms, um, not just religious freedoms, but, you know, our personal security, our... Um, our voice, you know, um, not only am I a Christian, but I believe in all the First Amendment and the second one, too. But the first one, you know, I've got a voice here at the TV station that I can, you know, put forth the gospel. I mean, I have the freedom of speech here and the freedom of religion. And they're cheaping away at all that. Yeah, okay. you know, in 1974, that's what it happened to us. Uh, we are not realized that communism is going to take all our freedom from mm -hmm. us. In 1974, when they took over, when they... Uh, announced Ethiopia became a socialist country, everybody of us, we celebrate and we say, oh, okay, this is good. Uh -huh. Then, when it comes down, they close down the church, they close down a Christian <coughs> school, and uh, they nationalize everything, they nationalize the bank, uh, they nationalize the hospital. Was religion nationalized or was religion just just a close down. It's they just banned. It's done. Yeah, it's so, done. And wow. There is no God. There is no Satan that is starting to teach at it's school. It's just the government and that's it. Yeah, yeah. just the government. And uh, then uh, really it's a very difficult time for us at that time. Yeah. And uh, they put us in prison, our church leaders and uh, some of us in different area. Just they start to... Uh, just putting us in prison, the only thing just to preach this gospel. That's right. And they think also we accept this gospel from CIA. Uh -huh. We accept from American missionaries. Really? And the communism and the Islam people, uh -huh. they think the missionaries are working for CIA. Wow. That is their translation, their, yeah. their understanding. Well, thanks to a missionary... <laughs> You're here today. Oh, yes, sir. Talk to us uh, about Always I said this, that. you know, uh, I thank America uh, wow. that they sent that missionary to my homeland. Wow. And I became a Christian through Mennonite Missionaries Ministry. Uh -huh. They came to my hometown and they start hospital and uh, school. Uh -huh. And that gives an opportunity for me to come to the hospital compound and to hear when Dr. Eshelman preach wow. about the gospel before that. I go to church, uh, but I haven't read my Bible, uh -huh. and they are not allowing me also to read the Bible. Uh -huh. Only it's supposed to read at the palace or at the, ch uh, the Coptic <coughs> church. Wow. And uh, uh, before that, really, uh, I have a big, a big question in my life, which it answered the day I accept Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hang on one second. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a little cold today, yeah, me but that's too. okay. Um, so, what year were you saved? Was that before socialism, communism uh, came in? It is, or during I this time? think, 19... Uh, I was 13 years old. Okay. Now I'm 65. Just calculate me. Man, that. you look good, man. I wouldn't have put past 40. I'm telling you, <laughs> you're doing good. Yeah, and, uh, I need this guy's secret. I, I am too young. Uh, when I was eight... I found out I am the only child to my mom and to my dad. Uh -huh. And that brought a question, and uh, I start asking who I am, you know, from where I'm coming. Yeah. I'm truly their child, or they adopted me like other children. Uh -huh. <laughs> and at age 10, I didn't get answer. I tried to commit suicide, to uh -huh. kill myself. Oh, my goodness. At then 10 years old, you were suicidal. Years old. Yeah, just, uh, wow. you know, I didn't get meaning for life. Right. Uh, my family is wealthy. I don't have any problem to live. And uh, we have everything. And uh, my dad is working with the government. And uh, I, I don't have any uh, problem to live. But spiritually, I'm lost. Yeah. And I need that answer from where I'm coming. And I have that vacuum, empty place inside here, uh -huh. which is not filled easily. And then uh, one of my cousin's daughter. She is taking class at the Mennonite Hospital, uh -huh. a 
uh, dresser course. And she asking me, why don't you come and see? Maybe that's good for you, she said. And then uh, I went there. Uh, the day I went there is uh, February 23, I remember. Wow. And Dr. Eshelman start reading John 316 <laughs> and asking us to read, to put our name in the place of world. Exactly. God so loved Gitana, he yeah. gave his only begotten son. And I start asking a question, is there somebody who loved me? Mm -hmm. Really? That day I start that love relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And, and folks, this is this is truth. I'm telling you. If I'm sitting here, it's as true as me being here. Um, if we were, if Katana was the only man on the planet, he would have still done the same thing for you, wouldn't he, Katana? Mm -hmm. He loves us all equally and loves us that much. You know, he's no respecter of persons. What he can do for yeah. me, what he can do for Mister Katana, <laughs> he can do for you tonight. <clears throat> so. Make that call tonight, 244-1616, and get right with the Lord tonight. Well, let's talk about you got saved, John 3, yeah. 16, and at, you were 13 years old. Yeah. Let's, let's skip forward a couple of years when you started preaching and you started baptizing, when you started doing these things for the Lord. Yeah. You uh, got some trouble, so they no, say. No, first the so. trouble came from my family. Okay. My family is a rigid, uh, really... Uh, rigid Coptic Orthodox believers. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And then, uh, one day I came late from school and my mom asking me, why you are coming late from school? And also this week I saw you, your character is completely changed. You are not uh, in trouble anymore. Uh, I said, mom, yeah, I'm not in trouble and uh, I'm coming from the church. Uh -huh. Which church, she said, there is a house of prayer which is called Heavenly Sunshine at that time. I'm coming from there, I said. Uh -huh. The missionaries rented a house for us and we call it Heavenly Sunshine wow. to study Bible in our own language. Uh -huh. And I, I stayed there studying Bible and coming late. And she said, what? Yeah, you born a Christian. You baptize in when you are 40 days. What do you mean? Uh-uh. I became Christian two weeks ago, ma'am. Wow. So in the Coptic she, Christian, yeah. if when you're 40 days old, you're baptized, and yeah. they think you're going to heaven. Uh, almost okay. the Catholic, Anglican, like, you know, like, the yeah. Lutheran. At 40 days, yeah, wow. They baptize you wow. just with 40 days. And <laughs> then I told her, uh, really, I just became Christian today. And she asking me also for, about Mary. You know, uh -huh. I was born in St. Mary's Day. And... Uh, my Christian name is belong to St. Mary. Uh -huh. And she asking me some question. I said, no, if God uses uh, the donkey, he can use everybody. Exactly. I said, you know, my, uh -huh. <laughs> my poor theology. <laughs> and that brought a big problem to me. And they grounded me for two years inside the house. Two years? Yes. And uh, that's the starting point, uh, you know. Uh, I, th I think I was grounded maybe for a couple of, Days Maybe, or something. Yeah, I ask every church I go. Two you know, years. For two years, they are not allowing me to go to school. They are not allowing me to go and, outside and to play. And what's wild is, you were you were getting in trouble before. Yeah. Now you're 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 not I'm the same not, person. You're not I'm in not trouble the, completely. And two, 24 months. Yeah, they are. You know, they are for afraid, being a Christian. They are wow. afraid for their repetition. Wow. You know, they are working with, with the government and they are very known in the town. If their son is going to have a new religion, they call us Pente uh -huh. at that time. Still, they call us Pente in Ethiopia, uh, Pentecostal day. Okay. And they yeah. call us Pente. Okay, so Pente. <laughs> that, so you're yeah, a Pente. That's, that's well, our name. During that two-year time, were you, able to, were you able to keep your Bible? Were you able to I, study I, the I, Word? I, I, want, I want to tell you that. Yeah. The Gideon. Uh -huh. Do you know the Gideon oh, organization? Yeah. Uh -huh. They gave me uh, from that, uh, Dr. Eshelman gave me in Amharic language a small Gideon New Testament. Wow. And then I keep that and I hide it. Wow. Hide and, it from your parents, hide it yeah. from everybody then. And always I said, I don't have any freedom to read it anywhere or in my bedroom or always they watch over me. Uh -huh. And I read it in my Freedom House. Uh huh. You know where is the Freedom House? Uh-uh, what is that? The restroom. The restroom. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when I go to the restroom, I only, 
I read that New Testament. I read it more than 24 times. Wow. Within that two years, uh, really, I asked God to give me my mom and my dad. If they became a Christian, I know yeah. I have a freedom. Yeah. But what happened <coughs> between that, I have a great aunt, my mom's aunt, uh -huh. her, her father's youngest sister. She is a psychic. Okay. She's a witchcraft maker. Uh -huh. All our family is worshiping her. Oh, yeah. She lived in a forest when she was seven. And for eight years, she lived with wild animals and everything. And ah. the evil spirit is not allow her to live with people. Yeah. And then she came back, she get married. She divorced three times and she gave birth to six children. She killed all her six children. The evil spirit inside her oh is God. not allow her to live a normal life. Then she became a wizard. A and your family maker. is worshiping her. Oh, yeah. After, uh, after they this. see that, they start worshiping her. My goodness. And that woman, one day, asking me to come to her house. And my mom is happy when she called me. I don't like to go there. I am not taking my shoes off. And uh, her blessing is to spit her saliva on you. I don't like all that thing. Oh my goodness. And she smells also bad, you know, she's not taking shower. Right. She Living puts like uh, butter, she puts uh, spice. Uh, anyway, she, she looked really weird. Uh -huh. And I don't like to go there. Yeah. And my mom sent me there and she asking me a question. She said, Gitana, yes. How I am going to be delivered from this spirit? She's asking you this. Yeah, uh, I said. What? We call her great grandma. Uh -huh. Why you are asking me this question? She said, I am tired. Yeah. See, all my teeth is not there. And I am not going to bury my brothers or my sisters. I am bounded here inside the house, only worshiping and doing when he is not happy. I, I can't uh, just walk with this life anymore. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yeah. Then w what is the reason you are asking me? Just I really want to know. Uh -huh. She said, I prayed last night to our God, God of Abraham, uh -huh. Isaac, and Jacob. And then he sent the angel in my dream. Angel Michael told me to ask you. Wow. Is that wow. right? <laughs> yes. And okay. how old were you at this time? 15 or so? 15. Yeah. And <laughs> I said, it's easy, Grandma. What? Just re-announce the evil spirit mm -hmm. and then receive Jesus as a savior. When she started to do that, the evil spirit starting to curse me uh -huh. from inside her. And then I read my Bible. Your I little Gideon you. New Testament. Yeah. Wow. And Mark, the last chapter, it said this. You cast out demon. Mm -hmm. It's written clearly. Exactly. You lay hand over the sick and the sick shall be healed. Mm -hmm. I use that verse directly oh. and cast out that evil spirit from her. Wow. And she became a normal woman. Wow. And uh, she worshiped the Lord for seven, eight years and she went home with the wow, Lord. Wow, that's awesome. And that brought my mom and exactly. my dad on their knee to accept Jesus Christ as a savior. That's awesome. You know, we as we as as Christians looking back on things, you know, we wonder, <clears throat> excuse me, why God let us go through this? Why God let us go through that? Mm -hmm. And and your grandmother is a is a perfect example. Yeah. God let her go through these things that if God can get a hold of her heart and mm -hmm. soften her heart mm -hmm. and deliver her from these things, mm -hmm. then other people are going to look at that and say, there's something real here. Yeah. There's something real here. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. And that brought in the city even, you know, a big change. Yeah. People who is worshiping her, they gave their life to the Lord. Wow. And uh, me and her, we go everywhere and we start to witness. That's and uh, I start and uh, when I was 17, uh, if you know Voice of the Murder. Uh-huh, yes. Uh -huh. The founder, Richard Wombrand, came to Ethiopia. Wow. To give his testimony. Wow. And I met him. Uh -huh. And then when he gave his testimony, 
you will see Jesus inside his eye, wow. how he was persecuted for 14 years in Romania, uh -huh. um, how he is imprisoned, how sometimes even forgets the word of God. Uh -huh. And uh, then I start praying and we start to read Tortured for Christ in Amharic language. And after that, really in 1974, That's when that came persecution out. came to our country. Wow. And uh, we experienced so many things. Wow. Well, let's take a break for a song. When we come back, I want to know about the persecution that you personally endured and and you witnessed uh, your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ being martyred mm -hmm. for their religion. Oh, yes. and, uh, and so you were, I mean, you were blessed that you made it out alive. I mean, just the fact that you're here uh, alive. Uh, always, you know, uh, I ask a question before that. Why I am not killed or why I am alive till today. Yeah. God got always a reason. Uh -huh. He, you know, he's not a respecter of person. Right. He's a respecter of himself. Yeah. And all my story is his story. It's not mine. Exactly. He wasn't done with you, and that's why you're here tonight. Yet. Sharing the gospel not on yet. television in Greenville, South Carolina. That's good. That awesome. So let's take a quick song break. <laughs> we come back. We're going to be back with uh, Pastor Gitney. Uh, Jim Beaver Band singing Little Things. I pray. 
change the world just a little And I pray that I'll remain faithful in the little things yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, that's the way to leave a mark Maybe I can change the world just a little Alrighty, Jim, thank you guys so much. But we're going to uh, wrap up our interview with Bishop Gitane Gitane. Am I pronouncing Geta that right? Gitane Gitane. Gitane Gitane. That, that's got my southern drawl in it. Now, you've been in Texas for a while, so you know what a southern drawl is, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I try to learn the Texan also. But still, I know only two syllables, maybe howdy. Howdy. <laughs> howdy and... Uh, you all? Y'all, yeah, you got that one good, man. <laughs> I like it. That's awesome. As long as I'm not the worst that's ever butchered your name, okay? <laughs> and trust me, I got people that butcher my name, so I know how it feels, <laughs> but I just love it. But anyway, we were talking about before the song how you became a Christian in, uh, yeah. in Ethiopia. Uh, communism came to Ethiopia in 1974, just pretty much shut down all the churches, made mm -hmm. it pretty much illegal to be a Christian at that point, to be any religion at that point. They wanted you to be loyal to, to the, 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 the government, party. to the Communist Party. Yeah. So let's talk about the persecutions that you went through and that you witnessed firsthand. Uh, I have been imprisoned back home in my country five times. Wow. After I escaped from my country, I came to a country called Djibouti. Uh, I stayed there for 10 years. Maybe they put me in prison twice in a year. Wow. And uh, you can't... Uh, take Bible with you or you can't have any necklace cross and they found me sometimes when I do wedding or when I do funeral something like that uh -huh. uh, but really the worst one is just from the five time in prison uh, in Ethiopia they found me uh, when I baptize people in the riverside uh -huh. you know always when we have baptisery here uh, I really thank God for the freedom, what you have. But in most countries where we are working or when the persecution is going uh, on now, it is around 50, 52 countries persecution is going on around the world. That many countries? Yes, wow. and they don't have any freedom to baptize or uh, to preach gospel freely. Wow. And at that time also we don't have that freedom. Our freedom is taken from us and... Uh, after I did evangelism in a small village, three of them they are asking me to be baptized. You know, the Jewish people and the Muslim, as soon as they got converted, they will ask you to be baptized. And they, you know, they have this water cleansing uh, in their mind, mm -hmm. and they think that baptism also will help them. And right. they are asking you. And I said, okay, just... Uh, we decided to baptize them, and we came to the riverside two in the morning. You can't baptize in daylight. You gotta do it in the cloak of darkness. Yeah, don't you? and then uh, two in the morning, we saw a security car driven toward us, and we saw the light. I said, "Okay, we are done. They are going to kill us, or we don't know." And they came. They saw these three new Muslim converted and they are asking them uh, to re-announce Christianity and to return back to Islam. They said, no, we haven't seen any love with Muhammad, uh -huh. but now we experience this love and also we have a witness inside here 
the Holy Spirit is witness to us, yeah. we are saved. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any uh, insurance in Islam that right. we are saved. Always we said, Inshallah. But now we know the truth, we don't want to go back. Yeah. And then they said, we will kill you, kill us. I'm standing there praying, you know, just if these people denied, the persecution is going to be harder on me. Right. I know that, and then I start praying. Two of them, they are not denying. They shoot them. Right you know what they said? Yeah, right in front of my eye, and they shoot them, and they kill them, and uh, the last word, what it came from their mouth is this, we love you. Wow. And wow. Ethiopian Muslims are going to be saved. Wow. And we are going home with Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. That's awesome. That is the last word awesome. which it came from their mouth. And uh, that gave me really another strength. And I don't mind if right. anything happened to me. Right. They go to the other guy and they are asking him. They are going to pull his eye. They try to persecute him. Uh -huh. <laughs> he said, it's OK. It's OK. Go ahead and do it. Yeah. Sure, indeed. They. He pulled his eyes. Out. Pulled his eye without any anesthesia. And oh my uh, he lived, I think, for 20, 28 years preaching the gospel wow. with one eye. Wow. And he went home with the Lord now, yeah. Wow. But the good thing in that area, as they said, we have more than 350 churches. Wonderful. Some of the churches are supported by us. Yeah. Uh, sure, indeed, wow. the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. We don't know. That here in in the no. U.S. No, I mean, that that is. I mean, God has blessed us, <laughs> but on the other hand, you look at these newly converted is, yeah, Muslims. They have, they have newly converted. Yeah, they haven't been read their Bible. Not, they they even, know only one they, verse which Doctor Eshelman gave me fifty years ago. <laughs> wow! I gave them that verse, and they God were will love the world. Yeah, because they knew it to be truth. Yeah, and here. You know, we're, we're scared to admit or, you know, be open and, and public about Christ or, or we'll deny him and say, well, you know, I'm, yeah, we're all Christians, <laughs> you yeah. know. Uh, we have oh, so yeah. many things here to oh, compromise, right. you know. Wow. And then my turn came and they took me to a small room and they hung me upside down. They start to pour boiling oil over my feet. Oh, my And goodness. they start asking me why I'm doing that. And they think I am working for CIA as a reason yeah. I received this Bible from American missionary. Wow. And I told them, it's really to tell you the truth, it's painful. I can't comprehend the pain. Oh. Then I asked them, I asked God first to take me home. Yeah. And instead of that, the Holy Spirit asking me to tell to these people how God so loves them wow. dearly wow. still. I said, you know, how for the people who kill your dad, for the people who buried your cousin alive, uh -huh. for the people who kill oh, your God. children, who burn the Bible, how you are going to have forgiveness and going to tell them about Jesus without joy. Yeah. And I said, God, how? And soon, joy starts to bubble from my belly. Wow. And then I started telling them how God so loves the world again. Wow. And they think I became crazy. Uh -huh. And then they put me down and they are asking me, Gitana, what drives you crazy like this? Can you tell us more about uh, the man you are talking? Uh -huh. I'm trying to tell them about al Messiah, Yeshua, wow. Jesus. And they just murdered these men. Uh, two they of the persecutors. Pulled one they of the accept. guy's eyes out and then hung you upside down. And they put you down and yeah. you share the Inside love Inside the, the prison, they wow. saved Jesus. Those guys did that yeah. night. See, wow. I'm, I'm walking with a scar wow. all over yeah. my body. and uh, wow. But it reminds me to pray for the Muslim world. Later. Exactly. And also we are working now with seven, eight nations in Africa. Wow. And our main goal is to reach out to Muslims. Wow. And I have a testimony here. Yeah. How we start a church inside the mosque. From the field. And you started a church inside the mosque? 
Oh my goodness. We got to have you back. I mean, we're running out of time okay. here, but we got to have you back. Or better yet, I'm going to Midland, Texas, and I'll, I'll just you join you come. out there. You so, welcome. Man, this, I want to hear about this, but yeah. if, if we don't have a, uh, just a handful of minutes, can people read about this on the website? Uh, no, we are not putting on the website okay. this kind no, of thing. This is, is but pretty if dangerous. They communicate stuff. us, we will send it to them. Okay. So and uh, also, if we are not converted to Islam, uh -huh. if we have Sharia to be our law, this warning is going to be given to the Christians. Wow. And that is what they are doing now in Dearborn, Michigan. That's right. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, well, you do a lot of things. <laughs> we we got to have you back on the show yeah. when we have more time. But Thank you. But Watch and Pray International Ministries, you're based out of Midland, Texas, um, but you got orphanages you're supporting, uh, reaching out to the Islam yeah. uh, communities there in Eastern Africa, mm -hmm. which is, <coughs> excuse me, sweeping Africa. Islam is just sweeping it. And y'all are combating that with Christ mm -hmm. and seeing results. So mm -hmm. people need to get a hold of you. There's your uh, information, watchandprayministries.org. Yeah. There's your email and your phone number. And if since we don't have time to read this, which I'm going to read it after the show, yeah. but people... Um, they can contact you with this yeah. and that you can send us this. This is exciting, folks. Churches getting started yeah, out of if, the mosque. If you want also just to minister to the Muslims, we have a teaching how to witness That's to the Muslims. So you know, they are yeah. here in our own land. Exactly. In our own village. Yeah. You know, I saw two three mosques here in North Carolina There's and one, also three here. Three miles from here. Yeah. That. And yeah. then to reach out to these people, it's our time. Yeah to do the mission here in our backyard. Exactly. And if you want to know about that also, we have a teaching to teach a church and to teach a people. Yeah. And uh, they can communicate with us and they can, can contact awesome. us. Awesome. And here's the thing, folks. You can't show the love of Christ by hating somebody. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. That just doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. You cannot hate these groups of people. You cannot chastise them or, or say, you're going to hell. Well, the thing is, we're all going to hell once, all right? We all need Jesus. So um, show these people the love, not just Muslims, but anybody that has no Christ in their heart, no Christ yeah. in their life. We have to show them that love and not just say, you're on the way to hell. No, we need to just show them mm -hmm. that love of Christ. Which, Don't tell them they are going to hell, you know, just... Yeah. Try to tell them how God so loves them. That's it. Yeah. And and I'm so excited because Paul tonight has given his heart to the Lord. Praise God. Awesome so, man, that's awesome. And Paul now knows that love that we speak of. Mm -hmm. So, Bishop, I want to thank you so much for being here. We're going to have you back soon, even if i got to come to Midland, Texas, because we got a lot more uh, to cover. It's okay. So. If you give me time, really, I will come. Just I want people to know. Yeah what we are doing and we are not here just to condemn somebody or exactly. to well Christ didn't come somebody. to condemn the world yeah. but to set it free and we, we are here to it. share the love of Jesus exactly and okay. the Lord called us as an awakening trumpet to America and that's what we do that's awesome yeah. thank you so much for being you're here welcome Bishop. thank you for having me yes sir God yes bless sir. you Jim Beaver Band's going to do one more song <laughs> and they're going to join us to talk about their group what's going on in their ministry Jim Beaver Band singing get me out of me
Get me out of me Circumstance, there's no second chance There's no game to be played Filmed upon the crosses Broken man The Jim Beaver Band, all the way from Hendersonville. Man, these guys, they're going to be up all night, I'll tell you, get back home. I was just talking to Bishop uh, Dentana. Uh, he flies out at 5 o'clock in the morning. So, man, I, I feel for him. So, come on over and join us, guys. I want to thank you all so much for being here. Hey, we didn't have a lot of time with uh, Bishop Dentana, so... I want to encourage you again, go to their website and find out more. Again, we're going to have him on uh, back soon. I just don't know when. Of course, it will be next year. Um, but WatsonPrayMinistries.org, WatsonPrayMinistries.org. You can write on P.O. Box 3304, Midland, Texas 79702. And if you missed any of that, let us know. Uh, we'll get that information out to you. But I'm sitting here reading this. You want to get a copy of this for yourself. Um, Awesome, starting churches out of mosques. That is awesome. So, but watch and pray, uh, ministries.org, and uh, find out more information. So, man, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Y'all jamming tonight, sounding good. And you told me that y'all are just like a new, newly formed, at least in this iteration of the group, huh? Well, that's, that's partly true. Uh, yeah. Some of us have been together for playing together in different iterations of some of these tunes for, you know, five or six years, but this band. Uh, really has kind of taken formation in the last, you know, in the last year. So yeah. we released a single in, um, I guess it was April, something awesome. like that. And uh, maybe it was Jan 
because it was sometime this spring. Yeah. And the EP yeah. will come this this coming spring. So we're, awesome. we're really just kind of getting off the ground. So. Excellent. Well, yeah. what's uh, being a newly formed group in this iteration? Of course, you. I mean. You haven't been playing for just nine or ten months. I mean, you've been playing a while to get as good as you guys are. So, um, well, thank you. <clears throat> what, what are you seeing God use your music to do? Well, I'm, I'm I'm glad that you asked. And let me also say, it feels almost silly for me to be sitting here talking about our little band when you know a, a real you know general in God's army is you know out there. Well, here's the thing: people look at people like uh, the bishop that was on just a second ago. God brought him through. God chose him to do what he did and sure. what he's doing now. Sure. God is chose and bringing you through things and he's placed you in the ministry that you're in. And we're all in the will of God as long as we're obeying that will. Sure. Now what he's gone through is horrific. Uh, absolutely. Horrific. But <laughs> don't belittle anybody's, you know, your ministry, anybody's ministry. You know, a lot of people think, you know, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a preacher. I'm not on TV. I'm not on radio. I have no talent. You can tell one person about the Lord. I'm telling you, and I hate to say this, but it's just the truth. And I can't lie on Christian television now. <laughs> right? You can lead one person to Jesus in your life. That's more than some pastors. Sure. I buy know? that. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. So, but so man, you're in the will of God. So keep it up, brother. Well, I appreciate that. Good, so. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You know, um, to to answer your question, you know. Uh, it's been a lot of knocking around with the band, talking about what is our vision. You know, we know we're, we're, we can play music and we can do things. Uh, we can go out and we can play different venues. And really, our whole vision is to make the kingdom attractive. Uh -huh. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with the, the paradigm of mountains of culture, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Jesus said to go into all the world. Exactly. Right? Well, one You of the mean not just play southern gospel music? Well, uh, <laughs> not if we can so, help it. No, it's, going it's, to all the world. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's, as culture changes, um, one of the things that's still in the forefront of pop culture is music, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's becoming more so every year, you know, particularly right. with the advent of the internet. You know, oh, when, yeah. when you and I were kids, you had to make it down to the record store to buy something. Exactly. You know? But now yeah. kids are streaming that stuff from, I you know. those little square plastic things they called tapes. Yep. And when those things were a single, I'm like, why? I mean, they got all this room on this reel. They could add more tape to, you know. This is true. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway. So we want to provide some music that's maybe an alternative message that's not necessarily overt, jamming theology down their throats, right. you know, right. but but reaching out and, and saying, well, here we're playing, you know, and we can, we can play music skillfully and we, you know, Very we, well, we, well, yeah. I appreciate that. That's, yeah. that's our endeavor anyway. That's our, that's our whole, uh, you know, spiel to try to do, you know, uh -huh. but at the same time have a message in there that maybe a lyric will catch somebody when amidst, you know, amidst the, uh, the flood of other music exactly. that is available that maybe, you know, what is he talking about here? Uh -huh. Get me out of me. What, wonder what he's talking about there running on empty, you know, and maybe right. that makes them run a little deeper. And then our ministry, you know, aside from the music is just how we treat people. We don't just play places like this. You know, we play clubs, we've, we've played bars before, yeah. you know, That's and, great. Uh, you know, and uh, it takes some accountability, you know, uh -huh. and it takes, you know, we're all on the same page together, you know, yeah. but when you go into those sorts of places and, you know, there's no band that's going to come in your venue that's going to treat your people any better than we are. Yeah. It's going to treat any, you know, somebody comes up to try to talk to us after a uh, set, you know, we're absolutely. You want to talk to Absolutely. Come on. You don't want to be down. like some absolutely. of these rock and roll jerks out here. Yeah. It's just like, hey, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm everything. You want to share Jesus with Absolutely. Them. There was a gig we did uh, about a month ago and there was a gentleman that, um, he, he had just sort of found out that I played guitar. He didn't, he didn't know anything about me. He didn't know my background or anything. So he started talking about, um, you know, playing guitar. And, you know, you know maybe sometime you come, on, come out to one of my gigs, I'll get you up there, you know. And I was just humble, you know. He didn't know I'd been playing for 30 years and owned a music school and, wow. you know, all that stuff. And I was just, I treated him very respectfully, you know. And then I think it humbled him a little when I finished, you know, but that gave, it showed him how, you know, I could have been like, man, I know how to, you know, play uh -huh. guitar or, or uh -huh. whatever. But it showed him that I was not not in it for ego, not in it for competitiveness. Exactly. You know? he, he saw something yeah. and he latched on. And, you know, I think we're, we're growing a friendship there. And Good. I'm honored to do that. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, tell the folks, we just got a few minutes left. Anything they need to know about the Jim Beaver band? Uh, how can they get a hold of you? Of course, you got the single out, sure. uh, Running yeah. on Empty. Uh, LP's or EP, what do we call them now? 
Long play, extended play. The full album. The full album is coming out. The well, in a couple it's, it's going to be a, a four out, four tune EP. Okay. Um, the running on empty will be included in that. So we're cutting three new tunes. Sweet. At Giraffe Studio in Hendersonville. Shout out to Andy Bishop. He's an excellent engineer. We get all of our stuff done there. It's excellent. great price. Really professional. GiraffeStudios.com. Um, but if, if they want to find out more about us, they can go to uh, you know JimBeaverBand.com. You can visit our Facebook page. We've got one of those. Um, and then if you if you if you like the tunes tonight, you can download the single. Uh, it's on everywhere digital music is yeah. sold. iTunes and Amazon and Spotify. If, if somebody's watching tonight and they want to have you in your church or men's group or something, even if somebody's watching tonight and they want to have you in their bar. Okay. All right. How can they get a hold of you? JimBeaverBand.com. Just Jim Beaver, not the. Just yeah, JimBeaverBand.com. Jim Beaver That's right. JimBeaverBand.com. Awesome. They can get a hold of us and book book through there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jim, thank you so much for Thanks coming. Thanks for having us. We're honored. Man, this was a blast. Wonderful music. You know, it, it, I think all programs are a success. And, you know, with uh, the bishop getting here a little late, you know, the devil's just trying to hold out, you know, trying to ruin this night because, you know, we had a salvation tonight. Somebody called in tonight. That's awesome. Paul, 62 years old, gave his heart to the Lord. You know, and that's what Satan, he don't want us to do. You know, <laughs> he doesn't right. want to fill heaven. He wants to fill hell, you know. And uh, he wants to, you know, he wants some company there when he's there. I think so. But if it's up to me, he's going to be awful lonely down there. So, and uh, and this program was a success, and I want to thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. You guys were awesome. So, hey, tune in next uh, tomorrow night. <clears throat> Another wonderful show of Nightline. Don't want to miss it. Also, keep us in your prayers when we go to Appalachian in just a couple of weeks, and uh, we'll see you uh, later. Thank you so much for watching.